Columbus Catholic Don's All Access is brought to you by Security Health Plan. Whatever your plans, there's a plan for you. Security Health Plan since 1971. Good. Hey, always eyes in the rim, looking for little windows, okay? When you're cutting, you're watching the basketball. Skip. Maggie, no, no, no. Those are dangerous passes, right? Okay, make the easy one. Mira, when the ball goes to the wing right here, you should dive to the low block. I think Gracie had the wing earlier there, and there's a gap in here. Just try to find it. You know what, if you get it, you can do something with it. We gotta make sure we're a viable option. This is a soft spot in the zone. Okay? Short passes, short passes. One time. I got it. That's it. Good basketball. Okay, the benefit of high post touches. Okay, come here. Oh, Maggie passed to me in the high post. R right, boom. Okay, if I simply get, remember we talked about this, that draw and kick. If I can get right here, Okay, what's gonna happen, right? That might be open, or draw, kick, and shot. We can use our dribble intelligently to, to get a paint touch and watch dominoes start to fall, right? Instead of just swinging it, look to get those, you know, um, situations like that where it's two against one. Got it? Um, well, so we have four juniors that are typically on varsity and I think we're all really a close knit of girls, so it's pretty easy to be a leader in this environment because we're all close friends and stuff like that. Last year we had Megan Kibble, Emily Jasinski, Kelsey Moore, Aaron Meese. They were all really great leaders and we could all look up to them. No one mean or anything like that. Right. I mean, personally, I don't think it would be okay. me. Right. Um, I'll throw. I'm gonna throw Maggie under the bus okay. <laughs> because we always just pick on her. The best survivor would be probably, probably Sam. Okay. I think she has some quick decision making under pressure. I only thought, I, I only thought Jenna did that, but now you do it twice, Lily. No, I don't. I don't chew gum anymore okay. at practice. <laughs> Um, I'd say that we all end together as a team, all healthy, all in it together, um, and having fun, obviously. Right. They lose a lot of their games in the backcourt. Watch the Athens film, okay? Athens pressed them the entire game. Spencer lost the game back here because they turned it over. That needs to be the game Friday. Got it? If they get it across, it's because they threw six or seven passes. Now they got the wrong guy on the wing with the ball, starting their offense not like they want to. Pull Sammy, good Sammy, good. Okay, Lucas, go to where Will check is. Sam, come play in the middle. Okay, throw the ball to the wing, please. All right, so when he goes out there and they go to the corner, which side do you go on? Right, why? Correct, right? If you go underneath, this guy's naturally taking away the top, the big man's taking away, but if you guys are both on the top, they throw a bounce pass baseline, now we give up a layup. So be really conscious of what side you're going on, please, on the rotation. Ready? Okay, until you hear somebody screaming, then you gotta be strong and be great and get it out. But you gotta look at the score first when you get the ball there. Because 95% of the people are gonna play you can't pass Nice! Nice! Come off with purpose. Good, Blake, good. Way to move it, Blue! Way to move it, Blue! There! Okay, okay that possession, Cole Doreen got a wide open three because he set two screens in a row, and then when his guy's playing that, he just pops off and he's standing there wide open. And I'm gonna tell you to watch the film last night against Colby, okay? Cole Doreen doesn't fit in today's world. 
because he doesn't give a, a rat's you know what about individual recognition. He did 95 things last night that won that game for us. If, if we assist, kept track of assists like hockey, Colin Rain's leading the league in assists. He just makes the extra pass, he defends, he gets rebounds, he gets his hands on basketballs, probably let us in deflections. Cole Marine is never going to be in the house. He's never going to get that type of recognition that doesn't matter. Do we understand? But he's the reason we're winning games. Keep it up, Cole. Go. The Clover Bell Conference. Meanwhile, Columbus Catholic 7-7 seven and seven overall, 5-4 and four in the Eastern Clover Bell Conference. Jumping center for Columbus will be Haley Zerman. She's able to get it to Lily Stratman. We'll set the starting lineups for you in just a bit. Skip pass out to Casperson. Open three, right wing. Sam Casperson from downtown. And we're underway. Columbus on the board first. Working against Meyer. Gets the shoulder that time. Loses the ball. Ball stolen away. Here comes Heaven Kid. Nobody in front. And Heaven Kind layup is good with the right hand. Thankfully, no shot clock. There's a runner by Callahan. Maggie Callahan. Feet and hands by Columbus as Meyer dribbles into the lane. Shot missed. And Haley Zerman up high to get that rebound. And now she's fouled. A little handsy in the backcourt. Now she'll drive. Kicks it outside Casperson. Nice job by Stratman. Open three for Casperson. And Sam Casperson has two three pointers. Six points. Stratman just shadowing, oh man, what a move by Heaven Kind as she went back door against Stratman, made the catch in the uh, double team and was able to reverse it up. We're at halftime, 15 to 14, back and forth. Skip it down to Casperson, 16 footer on the way from the right wing is good for Sam Casperson. Couple dribbles with the right hand, now kicks it outside, catch and shoot, oh, quick release by Milsna. To Stratman, trying to feed the post and Kibble. Working hard down there, turn around with the left hand. Oh, what a shot by Jenna Kibble. It's all man, she says over there. Everybody in the clover belt playing zone. There's an offensive rebound by Jory Meyer. Put back is good, hooping the harm. Durable. Missed the shot with the left hand. Kid working hard on the offensive glass. Put back is good. Kin can do it a number of different ways. She's got 12 points, and now nobody's coming for the ball. This could be a five second violation. And the ball is thrown out of bounds, but before the turnover, Coach Wilczek calls a 30 second timeout. Up ahead to Callahan, and that's gonna be the ball game. Good win for Spencer on the road tonight. So they knock off Marshall Columbus by 10, 37 to 27. Remember, Mr. Altman, and honor Mr. Altman. Those are two different things. Do we understand? Like that shirt you're wearing, I love it. I think it's the best warm up anybody can have because every time we go somewhere, someone says, what's about the shirt? And we get to tell the story, right? And some of you guys in the back might not know the story, but the guy's a hero. He graduated from Columbus in 2003, football, basketball, and baseball. He wore a Columbus jersey for a lot of years. 2005, he enlisted in the United States Army. He becomes a medic. Medics are the guys that serve other people. They take care of their brothers. And he doesn't just decide to be a medic, he decides to be the best medic he can possibly be. The Army has a badge, it's called the Expert, Med uh, Expert Field Medal Badge, right? It's for the top of the top. And to get the badge, you gotta run a race, qualify by, by completing a course over two or three days. And the course ends with a, with a 12 mile run that they got to do in three hours. And it's not just a 12 mile run, it's like through rough terrain, carrying your gear. And when he attempted it, there were 160 people that tried, 160 medics, and 12 made it. He's one of the 12. So he didn't just decide to be a medic, he decided to be the best medic he could be. And there's a lesson in that for all of us. Do we understand? And when he passed away, his mother shared with me a journal that he had written when he was deciding whether or not he should re-enlist in the army. Because he had already been to Iraq. He could have easily said, you know what, I'm gonna get out. But in the journal he writes down that he would re-enlist because he couldn't stand being over here safe and sound when his brothers were still over there fighting. So he decides to re-enlist 
to go help his brothers. And after two tours in Iraq, he ends up in Kunar province, Afghanistan. Because if you read about it, it's about the most dangerous place you could be in the world. And on Christmas Day, 2011, they have 24-hour checkpoints, a 24-hour security on this base. And medics don't normally do security. But some of the officers decide, hey, these young guys in our group are tired. They're worn out. Let's give them a break. And just like when Mr. Elman enlisted, he says, I'll go. So they can have a little bit of a Christmas over here in the war zone. And he goes out and does security. Firefight breaks out. He loses his life. When he didn't even have to be there. Do we understand? So you wear the shirt to remember him, but you honor him with how you live your life. By being like he was. By saying, I'll go. When you play a basketball game, it means that when there's a loose ball that your team needs to get, you be the guy that says, I, I'll go. When there's a rebound and somebody's got a box out, somebody that might seem a little bit bigger than us, you be the guy that says, I'll go. When your teachers at Columbus need help with something, and it might be easier to stay in your desk, you be like DeWaltman and you say, I'll go. And in 25 or 30 years, when your family or your community or anybody that could help, you can help, need something, you say, I'll go. You remember him by wearing the shirt, but you honor him with how you live your life. Do we understand? Probably the most heroic person that ever walked the halls of the school. And it's been 10 years, and it's amazing how fast 10 years have gone. But the lessons he left and the opportunity he's given us to do this has lasted, and we need to take advantage of it every chance we get. Understood? Everybody bring it in. Kanishi will drive down the lane outside Jacoby. Open three left wing. Book it. Lake Jacoby on a nice feed from Kanishni. Down the lane they go. Charlie Moore, open three left corner. Cash money. Charlie Moore. Here's Jacoby. Outside Charlie Moore. Book it. Charlie Buckets for three. Rockets go back to work. Here's Schmitz turning the corner, picks up the dribble, leaves it for Rucker. Three pointer, left corner is good for Rucker. Jacoby, crossover down the lane, spins against Brabilski. There's a little baptism by fire for the freshman as the sophomore Jacoby went into the spin cycle. Before Spencer's in the bonus, Columbus working against the zone pressure. Brandt has the ball stolen away by Wilczek. Good hands by Wilczek. Now Wilczek in the front court. Down the lane, runs into a brick wall. Noah Schultz somehow gets that to go after the contact. That's Haynes' game, man. He hits the offensive glass outside Noreen, thinks about the three. Nobody stops ball. He goes right to the lane. He was undercut. Hoop and the harm for Cole Noreen. Good job, Cole. Good job. You know what you're doing? A nice job. Okay, is he scored yet? Okay, fine. Yeah, you're doing a really good job. No longer me is. There were a couple times when we didn't ball parts the other guys quite enough. All right, I know we're asking a lot on you, but there's too many times you're allowing kids to, to just not feel pressure. If you put pressure on guys, you find out how good they are. Do you understand? And I get it. You're six, seven minutes into the game, you get a little bit tired, but you've got to pressure the ball. No matter what the score is, or no matter what the situation is, you can't let guys that aren't real skilled sit there and look at who they're going to throw the ball to. Are we clear? Okay, and then when you are pressuring the ball, Trust your help. And if you're the guy that's helping, you gotta make sure that he knows you're in the gap. And you do that with communication. If I'm on the basketball and I hear two teammates in the gap saying, I got your help, I got your help, I'm more comfortable pressuring the ball, but we don't communicate. It's too quiet right now. And what we talked about in chapel, I think is happening. Like we're caught up in all this stuff going on, which is great stuff, but you guys have a job to do in between those four lines, and it's gotta stay within those four lines. When we're on offense, some of us are thinking too much, right? Sometimes it's as simple as just catching the ball, moving the ball, and when I'm open, I knock down a shot, okay? But we left five or six layups up there that we should have finished. Understood? Different guys. We, we had passes deflected 
because we're hesitating on putting the ball on the floor when all we have to do is catch and move. So this happens improve the ball movement and make sure that we're communicating more defensively. Other than that, I thought you played a pretty decent half. Coach, is there anything else? When you catch and move it, set a good screen right now. Because they're, they're, they're playing tight ball, probably specifically on Charlie. Charlie, if you catch and you're not open, move it, set a screen, space hard. Yeah, if they're not going to leave you, you screen your teammate's not going to help, right? So I mean, you have to make sure that you, you're setting good screen. Guards, you guys should be salivating though right now. The ball pressure we call the second half, what happens when we ball pressure and we don't fall? And turn it over, okay? So if you're up on the ball and you're here and you don't make the guy put it on the floor, you're not doing your job. So you've got to make the guy put it on the floor and trust, as Coach said, your help, and they will turn it over. Anything else? Okay, now, now what we've learned in our last few games is that when we get a decent lead at halftime, Sometimes we come out in the second half and we don't have the same 0-0 mentality that we've had. And that can cost us later on against some really good teams. So this half, let's make it a test. Like, are we going to come out with the same approach, 0-0 mentality, game on the line every possession, or are we going to coast? And I'm asking you, do not coast. And if for nothing else, it's because there's 70 or 100 little guys out there that can't wait to put that jersey on. We need to show them how to play with effort and passion and enthusiasm. And the communication is the thing that bothers me the most. Be in a stance of communicating with your teammates on offense and defense. Non-stop enthusiasm and talk. We didn't have it at times that half. When we go quick hitters, they're there, right? Celtics is there. Do you understand? Emmett, it was so wide open. You threw it where, where you thought he was going to go. A little touch pass is going to get it to him. Right? And then Lucas, have some fun. Would you please? Do you have fun playing basketball? Because you're about as talented as any guy out there, but you got to enjoy yourself. Right? I mean, you got to go to the backboard, lay it in and slap it, and get, get guys going here with positive enthusiasm. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, when we get out there now, you got two or three minutes, and I want you to treat this and, and be honest with yourself. Am I treating it like it's zero zero right now? It needs to be that mentality. Because everything you do is going to build habits, and you got to build big one, a good habits for later on in the season. So let's do that, please. Take a professional approach right now. Here we go. Olsen, jump stop outside Wilczek, right to center three is good for Sam Wilczek. Here's Brandt. Brandt has the ball stolen from behind Jacoby. Dons are everywhere. Wilczek, left-handed layup is good. At the next practice and say, how did that happen? Oh, nice curl cut, Noreen, layup with the right hand is good. But here's Kreklau making amends. Nice feed from Wilczek. And the Kraken, Lucas Kreklau. Pretty good about himself. Outside, Sammy Neville, three-pointer, too strong. Rebound, Kreklow up high for it. Rebound with the left hand. Oh, nice putback for the Kraken. Lucas Kreklow. Rebounds the first half. There's a pass from Rucker stolen away by Jacoby. Jacoby down the lane, jump pass. Oh, what a shot by Charlie Buckets. Nobody was watching Brandt and got it to him. Sammy Neville, three, too strong off the top of the backboard. Cole Timler, there's that 42-inch vertical. Gets it to Kreklau. Here's Timler, outside Neville. Feeding the post to Kreklau, nice catch, kept it high. Good pass by Neville down to Kreklau. Leafable soccer player, that's his number one sport. Sammy Neville turns the corner with the finger roll. The senior, Sammy Neville. Final score tonight, 70-46. to The Dons taking care of business over the Spencer Rockets. I was really proud of the way we threw, you know, six, seven quick passes offensively side to side and, and really made them cover the whole floor defensively and then uh, just unselfish. When we're unselfish with, with six, seven, eight guys that can score, it's a lot of fun. I think, uh, you know, you've always, you've been unselfish all year, but I've really noticed the last few games, the passing has been so much better, turning down shots that might not be the greatest shot to get a better shot. Yeah, you yeah, know, I mean, I mean, I've been doing this a long time and, and to have, a, a group of, of young men where really nobody cares who gets the credit. You know, a lot, a lot of people say they don't care, but, but these guys really don't care. And it's just, it's just fun to be around, and uh, it's a group that I'll remember for a long time for sure. Columbus Catholic Don's All Access was brought to you by Security Health Plan. Whatever your plans, there's a plan for you. Security Health Plan since 1971. Tune in again next week for Columbus Catholic Don's All Access.